The bank statement practically leapt off the desk at me, numbers and transactions blaring like a siren. My heart pounded as I scanned the unfamiliar account, registered to Derek's name alone. Luxury apartment fees, jewelry store purchases, expensive restaurants. I barely recognized my husband of twenty-two years in those cold, hard numbers. The Derek I thought I knew would never. The front door slammed, interrupting my spiraling thoughts. Lena, you home? My mouth went dry as Derek strode into the den, his broad shoulders filling the doorframe. I clutched the damning statement, coiled for the confrontation I'd avoided for too long. What is this? I thrust the papers toward him, voice trembling. Derek's eyes widened almost comically before his expression hardened. He exhaled slowly and dropped onto the couch. I was going to tell you. Tell me what? I snapped. That you've been living some sort of double life? Spending money we don't have on... On what? Some mistress? The word hung in the air, bitter and accusatory. Part of me hoped he'd deny it, laugh off my suspicions as par for the course after years of fertility struggles. We'd been through so much, surely. Derek's jaw tightened, and he leveled me with a look utterly devoid of emotion. Something inside me cracked at the cold finality in his eyes. Her name is Elise, he said evenly. I'm in love with her, Lena, and I want a divorce. The words detonated like a bomb, shattering the illusion of the life we'd so carefully constructed. My legs shook as the truth slammed into me. How could you? I whispered hoarsely. After all this time? After everything we've been through? Derek's expression didn't falter. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. But it's over, Lena. I'm leaving you for a lease. The bank statement crumpled in my fist as twenty-two years of marriage disintegrated around me. How could the man I loved become this stranger before me? Fury blazed through my shock, burning away the disbelief. Oh no, Derek. This is just the beginning. I straightened my spine, squaring my shoulders to face the cruel, harsh reality before me. No more feigned ignorance or sweeping things under the rug. You want a divorce? You'll get one. But not before I make you pay for this betrayal. I sat motionless on the couch, the crumpled bank statement still clutched in my fist as Derek's words echoed in my mind. I'm leaving you for a lease. The casual cruelty of it felt like a searing brand. This wasn't just betrayal. It was a gutting. After decades of partnership, of struggling and sacrificing to build a life, he was tossing me aside for a woman nearly half his age. White-hot rage ignited in my chest, singeing away the shock and disbelief. How dare he! How dare he defile our marriage vows over some cheap thrill with a younger model? Derek cleared his throat. Look, Lena, I know this is difficult, but I've already talked to a lawyer about divorcing quickly and quietly. It's best for both of us to just move on. I raised my eyes to meet his impassive stare. Move on? Just like that? He shrugged, seemingly oblivious to the vitriol burning in my veins. We don't have kids. It'll be a clean break. I'm willing to be more than generous with the settlement to avoid any mess. My lip curled in disgust. You think throwing money at me makes up for your despicable behavior? I invested over twenty years in our life, our marriage, and you want to discard me for that? That woman? Her name is Elise. A muscle ticked in Derek's jaw. And yes, I love her. Does she know about the sordid lies and manipulation? I shot back. Or did you just dazzle the little gold digger with your bank statements? Derek's palm slammed the side table, rattling the lamp. Don't you dare talk about her like that. Elise isn't some fling or sugar baby fantasy. What we have is real. I barked out a bitter laugh. You're delusional if you think that girl looks at you as anything more than a wallet she can lie back for. Uh, in a flash, Derek was on his feet, towering over me with flushed cheeks and flared nostrils. For the first time, I felt a flicker of fear at the wrath simmering in his eyes. That's enough, he snarled, features twisted with rage. I'm done with your jealous vitriol. I'm taking Elise and leaving this miserable marriage behind for good. I rose to my full height, holding his furious gaze steadily. The sharp scent of his cologne filled my nostrils, so painfully familiar, yet suddenly soured. Don't threaten me, Derek, I said in a low, dangerous tone. I'm just getting started. The divorce papers landed on my lap with a heavy thud the stark black ink seeming to bleed accusation. I traced the legal jargon with a fingertip, sneering at Derek's grand romantic declaration to Elise Matthews buried amidst the dense text. My lip curled. So that was her full name. With narrowed eyes I reached for my laptop. 
If Derek wanted to burn our life to the ground over this woman, I would learn exactly who I was dealing with. A few deft keystrokes pulled up Elise's social media profiles. A perfectly curated highlight reel of pouting selfies, designer outfits, and luxurious vacation scenes. I felt bile rise in my throat at the obnoxiously hashtagged captions like, Living my best life, and treat yourself. The more I scrolled through the meticulously documented narcissism, the more something else emerged. A pattern. Photos with a rotating cast of older, wealthy-looking men. Brief flashes of Chanel bags, penthouse apartments, and elite country clubs that a 29-year-old boutique clerk could scarcely afford alone. Well, well, I murmured darkly. The mistress has quite the lucrative hobby. A brisk knock sounded at the front door, startling me from my vitriolic reverie. I frowned. Derek was at work. Who else would? Lena? It's Karen. Open up. Schooling my features, I swung open the door to my friend and neighbor of fifteen years. Karen's brow furrowed at my carefully neutral expression. Oh, honey, you look like hell. I brought wine and Chunky Monkey. She trailed off, taking in the discord strewn across the living room, the divorce papers, my laptop still open to Elise Matthews' Instagram candids. Karen's mouth formed a tight line as understanding dawned. She brushed past me without a word, heading straight for the kitchen to uncork the Merlot. I sank onto the bar stool across from her, gratefully accepting the large pour. Karen took a sip, grimacing slightly. So, Derek's having an affair with a younger woman. It wasn't a question. I merely nodded, swallowing a mouthful of bitter wine. God, Lena, I'm so sorry, Karen sighed. If there's anything I can do to help. At that, a harsh laugh twisted free of my throat. Actually, there might be. I need to know everything about this Elise Matthews. Karen's perfectly arched eyebrows climbed. You want me to. What, exactly? I'm going to bleed that little harlot dry, I stated flatly. She's not taking my husband and my life without learning a permanent lesson. A heavy silence fell between us, punctuated only by the hollow thunk of Karen refilling our glasses. Finally, she leaned forward, lips curved into a vindictive smile that could have curdled milk. Where do we start? The auditorium buzzed with the dull roar of hundreds of conversations. I smoothed my palms over my skirt, willing my hands not to tremble as I approached the stage. Derek sat front and center, his arm draped possessively around the waist of that insipid little blonde, Elise. My pulse thundered in my ears as I climbed the steps to the podium. This was it. My opening salvo in destroying their shamelessly flaunted affair. I caught Karen's approving nod from the wings and drew a steadying breath. Good evening, everyone. My voice rang clear across the hall, commanding rapt attention. I'd like to start by thanking you all for coming to this community fundraiser. Derek's brow furrowed slightly as he leaned in to whisper something to Elise. The cheap floozy merely tossed her hair and smirked. I steeled myself, fingers clenching the podium. Before we begin, however, I feel I must address a rather personal matter, an embarrassing situation my family has recently suffered. Whispers began to circulate, but I pressed on, projecting every ounce of calm I could muster. You see, my husband Derek has seen fit to engage in unsavory behavior, unbecoming of a respected businessman and philanthropist in our town. I paused, letting the implication detonate. Derek had gone rigid, his face mottling an ugly crimson. Elise placed a mollifying hand on his arm, but I could see the first flickers of unease in her painted features. Derek has not only cheated on me with a gold-digging mistress less than half his age, I proclaimed, but he's been embezzling funds from his business to finance their tawdry affair and her lavish lifestyle. A strangled sound of rage erupted from Derek's direction as the auditorium exploded into a fervent buzz. I caught a glimpse of his business partners exchanging shell-shocked looks from their seats. Elise tugged frantically on Derek's sleeve, her practice poise rapidly cracking. But I wasn't finished yet. Not by a long shot. In fact, you should all be aware that this woman, Elise Matthews, has a history of preying on wealthy older men, draining their resources to fund her vain and vacuous desires. At that, Elise shot to her feet, features twisted into an enraged snarl. You psychotic bitch! How dare you! Enough! Derek bellowed his face near purple with humiliation and fury. He whipped around to face his stunned colleagues. Don't listen to her lies and hysterics. This is just a jealous ploy because I wanted a divorce. 
So you admit to infidelity and mishandling company funds? One of his partners challenged, eyes flashing dangerously. I could practically see the ground crumbling beneath Derek's feet, just a little more to ensure he lost everything. Thank you all for your time, I said smoothly, letting the implication hang in the silence. Please give generously to tonight's cause. It's for the children, after all. Uh, with that parting barb, I stepped off the stage and allowed the thunderous roar of shock and outrage to swallow Derek and his mistress whole. As odd whispers trailed me from the auditorium, I felt the first tremors of vicious satisfaction. Let the fallout from that display of truth rain down on them both. This was merely the opening salvo. Derek's reckoning had only just begun. This is insane, Lena. Have you lost your mind? Derek slammed through the front door, chest heaving and red splotches mottling his face. Elise trailed behind, her designer blouse rumpled and eyes rimmed with smudged makeup. Looks like someone's fairy tale is crumbling. I arched an eyebrow, keeping my expression coolly impassive. I'm simply telling the truth about your misdeeds, Derek. The masses deserve to know what kind of man you really are. This has gone too far, he snarled, closing the distance between us with three long strides. Elise shrank back against the wall. My partners are demanding an emergency audit and investigation based on your slanderous little performance, I said softly. Well, that is rather awkward if you've been, shall we say, misappropriating funds? Derek's fist clenched convulsively at his side. You're deranged, you know that? This vendetta won't end well for you. On the contrary, I countered coolly. I haven't even properly begun. Elise piped up then, shaky voice laden with righteous indignation. You're just a bitter, jealous old woman who can't handle being cast aside for someone better. Derek shot her a warning look, but the poisonous words kept spilling forth. Derek loves me, in a way he could never love your frigid, shriveled husk. The resounding crack of my palm across her cheek reverberated through the hall. Elise froze, one hand pressed to her reddening face, eyes swimming with stunned tears. My voice was lethal calm. I'm going to make this very simple for your tiny, materialistic brain to comprehend, you cheap little tramp. I punctuated each word with a jab of my finger into her sternum. No one is taking anything from me, least of all my husband of over twenty years, not without paying a devastating price. I leaned closer, nostrils flaring, close enough for her to smell the wrath simmering beneath my skin. Derek threw away our life together to chase after a pretty young thing whose vapid, soulless company he could buy like a common prostitute, a disposable infatuation to stroke his fragile ego. Tears spilled over Elise's garish makeup as her mouth worked soundlessly. Derek looked like he might implode from bottled rage. I held up a manicured finger, sking again. Now, now. Don't get upset. This has all been a valuable lesson, really. Reaching into my pocket, I extracted a glossy 8x10 photograph and slapped it against Elise's chest. She flinched, then froze as her gaze landed on the incriminating image. What? What is this? Her voice hitched with bewildered dismay. The photo captured Derek in a grainy, compromising embrace with another woman outside a downtown hotel. A tall, willowy redhead in an unmistakably short skirt. Derek's face drained of color as realization set in. You spawn of Satan. That's not what you think. But the seed of doubt had been planted. Elise's mouth twisted with anguished accusation as the first fissures cracked through their sordid facade. Thank you for stopping by, I said pleasantly, gesturing toward the exit. Do give my regards to your— I paused delicately. Friend? The retort detonated like a grenade, which showering them both in fragments of the distrust and suspicion I'd carefully cultivated. They fled without a backwards glance, too consumed by their fresh turmoil to hurl any parting shots my way. A vindicated smirk tugged at my lips as the door slammed behind them. Phase two was officially underway. Let's see how much her professed love could withstand when laced with paranoia and doubt. The rapid staccato of Karen's knuckles against my front door made me jolt from my brooding reverie. I swung it open to find her grinning like a feral cat, perfectly coiffed hair askew. You'll never guess what fresh hell I just witnessed, she declared without preamble. I arched an eyebrow. Do tell. I was at the club getting my weekly massage when who should stomp through the lobby looking like a sadistic bridezilla but our dear Elise. Karen, skit, shaking her head slowly. Let's just say the claws were out. 
She was practically frothing at the mouth, demanding to know Derek's every movement and screaming accusations at anyone who dared make eye contact. A vindicated smirk tugged at my lips. I take it the show of distrust is my handiwork taking root? Oh, without a doubt, from what I could gather, Elise is utterly convinced Derek is having another affair to retaliate against her for, well, her own affair. Karen snorted indelicately. Guess she can dish it out but not take it. Fabulous. Let her suffer the same torment of suspicion and humiliation she inflicted on me. I felt a kernel of vicious glee unfurl in my chest. What about Derek? A sniveling, raging mess from what I witnessed, Karen continued with relish. Flinched every time his phone rang, started shouting down poor Steve in accounting about unauthorized charges on the company card. His world is unraveling at last, I mused. Good. There's more, Karen said, eyes glinting with undisguised glee. Word around the club is that Derek's business partners are circling like sharks smelling blood in the water. All this scrutiny you've brought down on him is finally catching up. I hummed in satisfaction, tamping down the feral delight that clawed at my ribcage. I suspected embezzling funds to subsidize his little kept woman would prove rather damning behavior. It's a massacre, honey, Karen cackled. They're tearing into every aspect of his finances and business dealings with a fine-tooth comb. The lawsuits and investigations are piling up like a multi-car crash. She threw back her mane of blonde curls with a victorious toss. From the whispers I've heard, it's only a matter of weeks before the entire sordid truth comes barreling out. Endless evidence of Derek's shady dealings to keep Elise living in the lap of luxury she so greedily craves. My chest constricted with deep, primal sense of retribution finally being served. The bastard's entire sham of a life was crumbling under the weight of his own duplicity and misdeeds, and his precious, mercenary mistress was getting dragged through the flames with him. Karen's gleaming eyes bored into me shrewdly. You've already won, Lena. Why continue twisting the knife when he has nothing left to lose? Wouldn't it be more dignified to walk away with your head held high? I considered her rhetoric for a half-second before laughing dryly. You must be joking, Karen. After the indignities he put me through, the utter disrespect and debasement for over two decades of marriage? The mirth drained from my face like a switch being flicked. No, the path of devastation is only just beginning for Derek. And that gold-digging whore. This is what happens when you cross me. An unexpected thrill raced through my veins, hardening my resolve into something merciless and unyielding as steel. There will be no forgiveness and no walking away with my head held high. They deserve to drown in the fires of deception they started, and I intend to ensure that happens in the most brutal, humiliating fashion imaginable. Karen's brittle smile faltered slightly at the frigid resonance in my tone. Very well, she replied after a tense beat. Just remember, my dear— an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. I bared my teeth in a feral grin. Then it's a good thing I'll be the last one standing. The sleek chrome handle of Derek's office door felt like ice against my palm. I paused for the barest moment, lips curving into a predatory smile before pushing inside. Derek jumped violently at the intrusion, his ashen features reflecting the haggard toll of the last few weeks. Elise, ensconced on the sofa beside him, looked equally worse for wear brittle and desperate in rumpled designer clothes. This carade of theirs was crumbling to dust. Lena? Derek's gravelly voice seeped wariness like an open wound. What the hell are you doing here? I swept into the room, every click of my heels reverberating with finality. It's time we had a long overdue discussion. Ignoring the twin looks of mingled confusion and resentment, I settled into the chair opposite them with studied nonchalance. I simply wanted to congratulate you, Elise scoffed, tossing her lank hair over one bony shoulder. For what? Being a raging psycho bitch. For helping me see the truth, I replied, saccharine sweet. About my husband. About your proclivities. Understanding flickered in Derek's sunken eyes first. Elise's brow furrowed before intuition rapidly replaced her scowl with stricken dismay. That's right, I continued in a low purr. I know all about your little habit, my dear. How many pathetic rich men have you run this exact grift on over the years? Flashing a bit of thigh and silicone until they empty their wallets for a fling with some arm candy? My gaze lasered into hers with surgical precision. 
How much, I wonder, was their humiliation and heartbreak worth buying for you? Derek's indiscretion is only your latest score before moving on to the next mark. You crazy bitch, Elise hissed, surging upright only for Derek's hand to clamp around her trembling wrist. Save it, Elise, he bit out hoarsely. The jig is up. I chuckled darkly, burgundy nails drumming the armrest. I must commend you, truly, for your restraint these past weeks, clinging to your wounded dignity as everything crumbled. Derek's little outbursts, the gnawing dread something even worse lurked beneath the surface. They watched me warily, both coiled tighter than caged lions as I toyed with their discomfort. Did you think the foundation-rattling scandals and driving a wedge between you was the full extent of my revenge? I tisked pityingly. Oh no, those were simply precursors, hors d'oeuvres, to wet the palate. Sudden movement at the door made them flinch. Karen strode in briskly, a bulging manila envelope tucked under one arm. You remember Karen, I trust. I drawled. She's been an invaluable asset in compiling the most comprehensive possible evidence, detailing your tangled web of lies, manipulations, and moral depravities. With a flourish, Karen upended the envelope over my desk, spilling a damning array of documents and photographs in a cascading slush pile. Derek's face went glazed with horror, mouth moving soundlessly. Bank statements. Accounting ledgers. Photos of you two in rather compromising situations. I listed with a serpent smile. All the grist for the most wildly public and humiliating disintegration of your lives imaginable. Tears sprang in Elisa's eyes as the reality crushed down on her. Why? How could you? How could I? I arched a delicately groomed eyebrow. After being so utterly debased and discarded by the person who vowed eternal fidelity, you brought a thousand times worse upon yourselves with your selfish hedonism and emotional evisceration of me. Standing abruptly, I braced my palms on the desk and leaned into their faces with a barely restrained snarl. This ruination you're experiencing? The total obliteration of everything you value? Consider it the mere flensing slice of my scalpel. The true torture is only just beginning. Sudden movement in my periphery made my head whip around, to Derek, halfway out the door, wild-eyed and gasping like a lanced bull. Derek! Elise cried, voice shredded. But he barely reacted, consumed by blind panic as he fled headlong into the cold oblivion of his own making. A vindicated smile stretched my lips as I watched the corridor swallow him. Good. Run while you can, you sniveling coward. There's no escape from paying this penance. Not as long as I still draw breath. The plush leather sofa creaked faintly as I settled onto it, fingers curling around the glass of deep cabernet. A satisfied sigh slipped past my lips as the rich, oaky bouquet enveloped my senses. Karen's bemused voice cut through the crackling silence. You're looking far too smug for someone who just torched her entire life to the ground. My gaze slid lazily toward her, one sculpted eyebrow arching. Don't be obtuse, Karen. You were there through the whole sordid affair. You witnessed firsthand how that life had already been incinerated by that pathetic snake in the grass I called a husband. A rueful chuckle bubbled up. I simply cleared away the ashen remains of my own existence to make way for something new, something revitalized and liberated from the shackles of the past. Taking a slow sip, I let the robust flavor linger on my tongue before continuing. This may surprise you, but I harbor Derek no further ill will. In the end, I made him pay the ultimate price, the annihilation of all he valued, his assets, his business, his reputation— all of it dismantled with the brutal efficiency he used to butcher our marriage. My smile carved deeper, almost feral. Even his precious little mistress abandoned him after I systematically crushed her delusions of being his one true love. A derisive snort punctured the satisfaction hardening in my chest, just another tawdry notch on her bedpost before inevitably moving on to drain the next wealthy fool. Swirling the deep crimson liquid, I watched the reflections dance hypnotically. No, I don't pity Derek in the slightest. He had the abject humiliation of losing everything coming in spades. Not a soul will dignify him with a shred of sympathy or respect again after the depths of his craven self-preservation were exposed. Draining the glass in one smooth swallow, the rich flavors left a deliciously singed trail down my throat. I set it aside and rose fluidly. I'm not looking back. Derek ushered in his own demise through his actions. A mirthless trill of laughter sliced through the weighted silence. 
which is ultimately the karmic justice in all of this. The detonation he triggered to discard me like a husk only managed to obliterate his facade of affluence and rectitude. Fisting my hands on my hips, I turned to face Karen's impassive features head-on. Now it's my turn to do the discarding, to slough off the bitter rancor and embrace a life beholden to no one but myself and my passions. A ghost of a smile played across Karen's lips. Going off to find your next soulmate, then? My bark of genuine laughter rattled the fine china in its cabinet. Heavens no, I'm quite happily divorcing the entire notion of romance after this sordid detour. Thank you very much. Extending a hand, I pulled Karen to her feet and enveloped her in a fierce hug of gratitude. My only guests to covet now are beloved friendships like yours. Everything else is done on my terms, by my rules. Pulling back, I smoothed her satin lapels almost maternally. As for the next chapter? Well, who says I can't dive back into my teaching career with fresh perspective and zero shackles weighing me down, travel wherever my wanderlust takes me, or hell, even ditch this town entirely and disappear on a vineyard in Tuscany? A beatific smile bloomed across my face at the unscripted horizon of possibilities unfurling gloriously before me. After twenty-something years of self-sacrifice and emotional purgatory, the world was my personal oyster now. Pearly laughter spilled unbidden from my lips as I spun away, arms flung wide in a gesture of pure liberation. The future shimmered ahead, effervescent and radiant and utterly, gloriously mine.